Hey guys, this is Chubbs, and I just figured I'll give a quick rundown on how exactly I created the uh, RPG example that I showed in one of my earlier videos. So, I'm just going to go through each piece one by one, show you how it all comes together, and give you an idea of how you can create something like this on your own. So, of course, this is the room that the player starts. Here's the player start. We also have the armor bonuses, which are in blue. And then the NPCs are these. And then you have a few red monsters out here. And the, the only other items I really haven't covered are the chain gun right here and the med kit right here. These are sort of unimportant. They're just there to give you a visual guide and show you what you're going to be buying. So as we open our script window, you'll see that I've heavily commented this code to show exactly what everything does. Up here at the top, just as with every piece of code, I put number include and then zcommon.acs in parentheses. Now these up at the top before any of our scripts are what are called uh, global variables. Now what, what I mean by global is that if you put a variable up here every single script can see it and access it. Now if you're brand new to programming a variable is basically just something that you name and that holds like a number or even a word. Our variables that we have right now are quest1 active and this is a variable that determines whether the quest is active, inactive, or completed. And as you can see, I've commented it here to show what the different numbers correspond with. If, it, if it's zero, which is its default number, as you can see, then it's inactive. If it's assigned the number one, we'll consider it active. And if we assign it the number two, we'll consider that it's being completed. So what you do here is you put INT, which stands for integer, because we're going to be dealing with a number space and then the variable name which is quest1 active and then another space and then equals and then zero which is what its starting value will be and then put a, print, a semicolon here at the end down here I have two more global variables these are I put that they're miscellaneous because they really don't have anything to do with the with any particular request the first variable is for credits it's also an integer and it also starts at zero because we, I want the player to start out with no credits. And we also have quest one count, which is basically just the, the counter for whenever you kill a monster. It's also an integer, and it also starts at zero. So now that we've gotten these variables out of the way, let's check out some of our scripts. So above script one, you'll see that I've commented that this is for the first quest and this script has to do with the NPC. So what it first does is it has what's called an if statement and it asks a question and if it's true it performs whatever's in these brackets or braces. So it asks if quest one active is equal to zero then assign n number one to quest one active in other words make it active print this message on the screen and then open the door so after this executes quest one active is equal to one the second line of code asks if quest one active is equal to one then simply print this message and this one down here says if quest one active is equal to two in other words if the quest has been completed and you return to him and speak with him it prints this message and then it opens the door to let you proceed. So, in other words, what happens is when this script is called, it asks this question, and if this isn't true, it asks this question, and if this isn't true, it asks this question. So, it's going to perform either this block of code, this block of code, or this block of code. And if neither, if none of these are true, it's not really going to do anything. So let's minimize this. What we have here is a line in front of the NPC 
so you're not actually pressing the use key on the thing itself you're just pressing the use key on the front of the little counter that he's behind and all it does is just, it just has an action of 80 which is script execute and it tells it to ex execute script 1 which is the script I showed you and I made it a repeatable action because we want the player to be able to activate it and get the quest and then come back and activate it again and uh, and then it'll go through those if statements and decide which response to give the player so let's go back into our scripts I've actually got it open here and let's check script number two this is also a void and as you can see by the comment immediately above the script this is also corresponding to quest one and this is what happens when a monster dies so uh, let's first before I get into this go into thing mode and let's look at one of our monsters like this one right here if you right click him you'll see that on the action tab it has an action of 80 which is script execute and it executes script 2 which is what we're about to get into I've assigned this to all of our monsters outside so uh, each time you kill one it's going to call this script now what this script does is it first asks if quest 1 is active which means it asks if you've obtain the quest so if it's equal to one which means it's active then it performs this code and what this code does is it first increases the count of the monsters which is the variable quest one count and uh, so what it does is it increases it by one and then it prints this message which also shows the number of uh, monsters killed and then it goes down here and it asks another question within this and it asks if quest one count aka the number of monsters killed is greater than or equal to 10 and that's going to be our goal which was assigned by the NPC up here so if it is greater than or equal to 10 then it's going to do these things within these braces so what it does here is it makes quest one active equal to 2 which as you remember up here means that it's been completed going by air terms and then it prints this message that basically tells the player it's been completed so uh, that's everything that happens when a monster gets killed now these are a little bit more simple down here script 3 simply gives you a it adds 1 to credits and that's what we mean by credits plus plus now another way you can do this with variables is you can do plus plus credits like that or if you want to increase it by one you can even do credits equals credits plus one so what this tells it is it takes whatever's already in credits and it simply adds one to it and then it stores that in credits itself but I prefer to do it the shorthand way by doing like credits plus plus or plus plus credits and of course credit is the name of the variable so if you have a variable named money for example you just do money plus plus or whatever and then it just prints uh, how many credits you have here this is a script that actually executes every time you pick up one of the armor bonuses so if you go to one of these armor bonuses right here go to the action tab just like the monsters it has script to execute but the script number is three instead of two so all it does is it just calls this script which increases your credits then tells you how many credits you have afterwards script four is the ATM machine which is right here it's just a line you press and it can only be done once note that it's not repeatable just like the others it just does script execute and it executes script four and what it does here is it simply takes credits and then it adds 100 to how many credits you have and then it prints a message here that tells you you've done an ATM withdrawal and it then tells you how many credits you have afterwards so these two scripts are really small really easy to understand these two down here that I just highlighted are the scripts for the merchants each one asks a question the first question it asks is do you have enough credits for this item